Hello info people, it is Genevieve and in this video we are going to learn a foolproof way to paint hair in Procreate. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start painting. So you might recognize this face from the portrait painting tutorial. If you've come up here to this tutorial from the last one, uh, make sure to open your canvas and we're gonna follow up right where we were. Otherwise you can just use this technique in any other painting project that you have. For reference, the dimensions of my canvas are 2500 pixel per 2500 pixel with 150 dpi, but again, you can use whatever you need for your project. Now we'll be using brushes that come with my brand new portrait bundle for Procreate, but I will also be recommending just brushes that you can find for free in like the basic Procreate brush set. So you can follow the tutorial no matter what you have at hand. Um, and that we will be using, if you remember from the last tutorial, this file that has kind of pre-made layers. And that also comes with the portrait bundle, but I will show you how to create all those layers. So again, you don't need to have the bundle to follow the tutorial. It is absolutely up to you. If you want to check it out, however, it will be linked in the description below along with a promo code just for you guys as usual. The first layer you're going to create is going to be a layer that is set to normal 100% and you're just going to name it to base and we're going to set up kind of the basic shape we want for our hair. You're also going to pick the color you want to use so if you have the portrait bundle there is a hair color palette otherwise you can just pick whichever color that you want. I'm going with kind of a like strawberry red feel <laughs> and if you have the portrait bundle go ahead with the hair base otherwise you can go and pick in um, organic the hemp brush you can see it has some some texture to it it's not necessarily exactly what we want but it's going to work for for what we need here because basically all you want to do is roughly outline the um the shape of the hair and you can be super loose here. All we're doing is kind of thinking of the movement of the hair and the direction of the hair. So in, in my case, since she has her hair up, I'm always drawing my stroke kind of from the scalp towards the top and curvy flowy lines. If you are drawing hair down, you would be flowing it downwards, of course. So this is all about movement. Hair is all about movement and flow. It's not more complicated than that. You just always want to make sure that you're loose in the way that you are painting. And once you have kind of the general outside outline, we're going to focus on the hairline, which is probably the hardest part of this entire tutorial. So the hairline is usually kind of the same height of the nose above the eyes, basically. So if you stack <laughs> the height of the nose on top of the eye, that's going to give you approximately where on the forehead a normal hairline would be. And you're just going to very, very lightly add some texture with your brush. Again, just following this idea of where the hair is flowing to. So since mine has her hair pulling upwards, the roots are going to be pulling upwards as well. If it was pulling downwards, well, you would get a different flow because, you know, gravity. <laughs> so really loosely and softly sketch that out. And then you can fill in kind of the gap um, of your shape. So you want to make sure that your your base layer for your hair, the color is solid. You don't want to have texture in this, that's not the point. You really just want to make sure they have a solid color for the hair, except for the hairline. And at this point, you can also decrease the size of your brush and just go around and add some smaller like hair strands. You're not going to draw flyaways just yet because that, that's another step, but you can kind of make sure to break out a little bit of this really super like rigid looking hair by adding some smaller clumps. And it's also a really good time to experiment and maybe adding a little bit of hair falling on the forehead that can be super cute and that can help again break kind of this like rigid uh, feel that your hairstyle might have otherwise. And at this point we're almost done with the base which believe it or not is the hardest part of the tutorial. So what we're going to do now is we're going to refine a little bit of the um, hairline. And to do that we're going to use the smudge tool. We're going to set it to either the hair strand brush that comes with the um, the bundle or if you go in the touch-up section you can use any of the fiber brushes again they're not perfect they're not made for hair but it's still gonna work so just pick one of the brushes depending on what you have and we're going to use the smudge tool to blend in the hairline a little bit so what you want to do is start from the center of the hair and blend the color towards the um, the hairline itself so you're kind of going to drag the color 
towards the forehead or towards the temple of your character and that's going to make the hairline super soft and really quite realistic. And at this point you can also use and kind of go back and forth with your, your paintbrush and your smudge tool to make sure that you don't, don't have any weird gaps and to kind of readjust the shape a little bit. But really this is not super hard. It's honestly a technique that saved my life because I couldn't get hairline right for the life of me. <laughs> So at this point, congrats, that was, like I said, the hardest part. We're now going to make it look like hair. So go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to name texture and apply it as a clipping mask. And you're going to change the blending mode and set it to multiply and the opacity you're going to put somewhere in the middle. So somewhere between 40, 60%. We're going to maybe play with it later. So don't worry too much about the opacity for now. Um, you can use the same color that you've been using before. And all we're going to do is literally just draw the movement of the hair and to do that you can pick the hair strand brush that come with uh, the bundle or again you can go back to the touch up and it's like one of the fiber brushes so I'm gonna use the hair strand too and we're not worrying about uh, shadows and lights right now we're really just drawing hair texture so what you're doing again you're just following the movement and the volume of the hair so mine is pulling upwards, so I'm just drawing some curves that are pointing, you guessed it, upwards. So something super simple and don't really worry too much about the details because we're going to use this smudge tool to kind of make everything <laughs> get together a little bit better in the end. And if you have an updo like this, uh, like mine, you kind of just, again, following the movement, thinking, okay, my hair is starting from probably the, um, like the ponytail elastic in the middle and just kind of falling back inwards. So again, you can see that's really easy. Nothing super complicated there. And once you have your basic texture, go back to your smudge tool, keep it at the same brush that, that you had before. And you're just going to smudge in some of the parts where um, the texture looks a little bit weird, either because it kind of overlaps in the weird way, or maybe because you want to blend the ends a little bit better. So you don't want to smudge everything, of course. You do want to keep some of the like really nice, clear, defined strands, but you do want to blend stuff a little bit better. And since the smudge tool itself has the hair texture to it, it's still going to smudge with the hair texture, so it would be really hard to over smudge, basically. <laughs> Again, it's just a really foolproof method, so you cannot, you cannot miss it. At this point, you might want to hide the sketch so we can actually see what we're doing like properly. And we're going to move on to creating the base shadow. And the base shadow is another layer applied as a clipping mask, and it is also in multiply around 50% or something like that. And um, I don't know why I have a layer mask there. I'm just going to delete that. Forget about it. It doesn't exist. <laughs> and all we're going to do on this layer is we're going to start mapping out really roughly the shadows. So you can use pretty much any color you want for the shadows. I like going with some sort of um, a grayish purplish color. And you're going to pick a super soft brush. So in the airbrushing panel, you can use the soft brush or the extra soft brush that comes with the bundle. And yeah, you're just kind of mapping out the very general shadows. You're not worrying about the clumps of the hair or anything right now. It's really just kind of like the bottom part of the hair and then, oh, behind the, the top bun that she has, the messy bun, just kind of, just that, <laughs> literally that simple. And then you can play with multiply or the opacity, I should say a little bit, and maybe refine with the eraser. But again, this is super, super rough. Like we don't want to focus on anything really precise or any details right now. We're just kind of giving some volume to the general hairstyle. So you can see if we hide it, it really does kind of start showing the shape of the hair. And that's, that's very important for sure. We're also going to go back, if you uh, are following from the first tutorial, we're going to go back to the volume and texture layer and in the hair shadow layer, which was a layer just set to multiply. This time we're going to use a more detailed brush, so either the detailed texture or detailed smooth brush if you have the pack. Otherwise, you can just pick any brush in the inking and sketching panel that you like. And we're just going to kind of draw the shadow that would be on the skin or like the face from the hair. So kind of the shadow that the hair would cast. So if you have like a little hair strand that falls in the face, you're definitely gonna have a shadow behind it. Um, so that's that's the layer to, to do it. You might not necessarily need this layer, so you can just skip it if, um, if you don't have, if you don't need it. <laughs> 
And with that done, we're going to actually dive in and start adding some proper shadow details in the hair. So going back in your hair section, you're going to create a new layer, which is also going to be a clipping mask, and you're going to set it to multiply and the opacity somewhere around 60%. But again, you can always play with that. And you're going to go back with the color that you used at first when drawing your hair, and you're going to keep the same detail brush. So if you are using something in sketching and kink panel, you can use that, or otherwise you go with um, you can, I mean, you could even go with the hair base brush, but basically all you want is a brush that you have really good control over because we're going to draw like, the clumps of the hair. And again, this is really not difficult. All you have to do is focus on the movement. So in my case, like I was saying, my hair is pulled upwards, so I'm just going to draw sections of hair that I pulled upwards. So what I mean by clumps is really just you're thinking, okay, hair... Yes, you have like the tiny individual little hair strands, but you also have bigger clumps of hair that kind of get together and you can see they, they bring some texture in hairs. Except if you have like, like super, 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 super flat hair and silky hair, then you're not going to get that. But the second you get hair that has a little bit of texture to it, it kind of tends to clump together. The best example of that would be like really nice curly hair. You can really see the curl clumps. So anyway, <laughs> think of that here when you're drawing your hair details. You don't want to draw just like these shadows everywhere spread out with the same distance. You want to make sure that you clump them together and have actually like group of hair. And you can see here in the hairdo, I'm kind of almost drawing like ribbons. So it's like, okay, how can I show the movement and show the volume of the hair and just a fewest amount of strokes as possible. And at this stage, you can be really like super rough and loose because hair has to be drawn in a very loose way. Um, otherwise, it looks really straight, but in a bad way. <laughs> like it doesn't look like it has any movement to it. It looks like it's made of plastic or like something that doesn't move. Um, so ten try to really draw in a super loose way and then you can refine either using the eraser or of course as you can see i'm doing right now with a smudge tool you can just kind of blend your strokes that are a bit too visible to make them softer and less like sketchy <laughs> so at this point you should be pretty excited because your hair should start looking like hair but we're going to really bring it to the next level so we're going to create a layer that we're not going to use just yet. It is a layer called balayage and you're going to apply it as a clipping mask and set the blending mode to soft light just for now. And then you're going to create another layer. This is also going to be a clipping mask. This one is going to be renamed lights and you're going to set the blending mode to add and lower the opacity around 20%. Then you're going to pick the color that you want for your light source. So I'm pretending this character is probably like outside in the sun. So the light would be, you know, fairly warm. And you don't want to go with a pure white because otherwise it's going to look just too intense. You want to have something that has some, some color to it. And you're going to use the hair strand brush that you've been using. So either the fiber or the actual hair strand brush. And we're going to go and draw the movement again. But instead of drawing it towards the entire length of the hair, we're going to draw sections. So as you can see here, I'm not starting from the actual... Uh, hairline and I'm not going towards the back of the head. I'm just drawing a little section in the middle and I'm not drawing all the clumps. I'm basically creating more clumps <laughs> by separating the big clumps into smaller sections. So go ahead and do that over your hair in general. And again, this is just about showing the movement, showing the direction and the way the hair is folding onto itself or is cascading on the shoulders or whatever is the case in your artwork. At this point, if you want, you can use the smudge tool to kind of blend in the edges of your strokes, but that is totally optional. That's kind of being a bit of a perfectionist, but you know, might as well since we're spending a little bit of time on these um, hair strands. Once you have your basic lights, go ahead and pick a lighter version of your color. So in my case, it's going to be this super bright yellow. And you're going to go back to your detail brush and you're going to add individual hair strands and this time you want to just go wild so you you're going to break the general movement in your piece um, and that's going to help make the, f the hair feel more realistic because you know real hair is not just like all following the same exact 
shape if there's a little bit of wind or static or something you're gonna get some weird little you know um, I don't want to say flyaways because flyaways is gonna be a separate layers but you're gonna get some hair that is like just doing whatever it wants it's just living its best life you know so you're gonna draw a few random strands that has that have different curves and just different directions than the main hair on there and speaking of flyaways, this is actually what we're going to do now. So go ahead and create a new layer. This one is not a clipping mask and the blending mode is just like normal 100% opacity. And you're going to select kind of a color that seemed to be very often seen in your hair. So like the, the average color of your hair, if I may say. And you're just going to draw some very thin hair, like individual little strands that are poking out to break out the edges of your hairstyle. There is no rule here, depending on, you know, the situation your character is. If it's in the wind, you're going to get a lot of flyaways. If it's curly hair, usually you get a little bit more than if it's super straight hair. But again, so just add that. And as you can see, it makes such a big difference in the realism of the piece. Um, I mean, we can see the whole face, but okay. So yeah, it makes a big, big difference in just making everything feel a little bit more complete and more natural and more realistic. And it takes just a few seconds, so it's absolutely worth doing it. Now, we can add a little bit more color to our hairdo by going back to the balayage layer, which is like, if you want to add either like an ombre or some like random colored strands, you could definitely go ahead and do that. And I mean, you get to pick whichever color you want. I'm just going to go with this super bright purple so that you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, you can use just a regular brush and brush over some strands that would be a different color. Or you could even draw just like the bottom part or the roots of the hair if you want to have some sort of a cool ombre look. So that's just a really nice way of adding a pop of color and you can play and change the blending mode. I think hue looks really good, color looks really good as well. So you get to experiment and see what you like. You get to just play and do whatever you want with the opacity as well. And you can always use the blending tool, uh, the smudge tool I should say, to just kind of make sure those strands look just well integrated in the hairdo. But again, the style is up to you. And the last thing you can do is you can change the color of your hair really easily. If you go back to the base layer, if you go to adjustment, hue, saturation, brightness, selecting layer, you can then change the hue and you can see I can go with like bright pink hair if I want. And I mean, it doesn't require redoing the entire hair. You just go ahead and, and tweak that and you can just pretend that you're dyeing the hair basically, which is really, really cool. Depending on how much you're changing it, you might have to change the hue of like the texture layer and maybe the shadows, but I mean, again, that, that should take just a few seconds. So that's not, not a big deal, but yeah, you can definitely play around and just find a color that you like. Even if you've drawn everything, you don't need to start over. So there you go, this was a foolproof way of painting hair in Procreate. I would love to see what you guys create, so make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And I will link in the description below the brush pack that I was talking about and that I was using. And I will also link the tutorial for painting the face if you want to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week. I'll see you soon.